a, a person who writes, well, the definition of a lawyer is a person who writes a 50-page document and calls it a brief. Today we honor one of the greatest lawyers in the history of the church, St. Thomas More. He is the patron saint of the Diocese of Arlington. When the Diocese of Richmond and Arlington split back around 1975, almost 50 years ago, they were looking for which church should be the cathedral. They looked in Alexandria and Annandale and different areas and they decided to go with St. Thomas More Parish and elevated that to our cathedral. So today is the patron saint of our Diocese of Arlington and I'm very glad that they chose Arlington. Diocese of Arlington has a nice ring to it. We could have been the Diocese of Tyson's Corner, perhaps, or the Diocese of Dumfries. So I think the bishop chose very wisely. And you know, who was St. Thomas More? I certainly encourage you to read the book, A Man for All Seasons, or watch the movie, A Man for All Seasons, one of the greatest movies that Hollywood has ever produced, one of the greatest Catholic films, the one best picture in 1966, best director, best actor, Paul Schofield for portraying a brilliant Thomas More, best adopted screenplay. So it is a wonderful movie, I encourage you to watch it. I'm sure you can get it online and uh, watch that perhaps today or read about this great St. Thomas More, born in England in 1478, brilliant young student. He was a page for the Archbishop of Canterbury who noticed how uh, brilliant this young man was and was able to send him off to Oxford at the age of 14. And Thomas More lived with the Carthusians in Oxford and really perhaps felt called to the Carthusian way of life to become a priest, but then realized that God was calling him to live in the world and to work in politics as a statesman, as a lawyer, and to pursue the vocation of marriage. So he married in 1505 to Jane Colt, and they were blessed with seven very happy years until her very tragic death seven years into the marriage, leaving him with four young children. So he married again, Alice Middleton. She was a very good provider, very good mother figure to the children, but they say she was a difficult person to live with. She had a difficult personality. So as you know, the Catholic Church has patron saints for everything, even nagging wives. So St. Thomas More is the patron saint of that. But the, of course, Henry VIII was very close to Thomas More, made him a knight. So he was then Sir Thomas More, made him the Lord Chancellor of all of England, the number two position in all of England. And things were going very well until the great matter arose of Catherine of Aragon, having been married to Henry VIII for, I believe, 23 years. They were not ha able to have a male child. They lost many children in in miscarriages and childbirth. <clears throat> so Henry VIII uh, wanted a male heir. That was his main um, desire. And in fact, if you want to read a, a, a great book, read the book called The Six Wives of Henry VIII. Fascinating book. And when you see Catherine of Aragon from Spain, what a saintly woman. In fact, they're even talking about her cause, Catherine of Aragon's cause to be promoted because of her holiness and her dedication and faithfulness to Henry VIII and to the marriage, even despite all his infidelities, especially with uh, Anne Boleyn, and yet yeah, Catherine of Aragon remained so dedicated, so faithful, always upholding that her marriage was valid. The church, the Pope investigated the marriage, said yes, it was a valid marriage, there's nothing Henry VIII could do, so he decided to break away from the church and started the Church of England, made himself the head of the Church of England, and said everybody has to declare the oath of supremacy, that the Pope is not the, the, church, the head of the Church of England, but I, Henry VIII, are, but I am. And of course, Thomas More would not do that. Would, he would not violate his conscience, so he remained silent. But Henry VIII really wanted the support of people like John Fisher, the Bishop of, of Rochester, who was also refused to declare the oath of supremacy of Henry VIII as head of the church. So Thomas More was imprisoned, John Fisher was imprisoned, each of them for about 14 months. When they would not sign the oath, each of them were ultimately beheaded. Their heads were placed on London Bridge on a, a pike. They say many people were converted seeing these heads of these two saintly men 
on London Bridge. And in fact, it shocked all of Europe when Thomas More and John Fisher were executed by the king, by Henry VIII. But they remained faithful to their conscience and remained dedicated to the sanctity of marriage and loyalty to the Pope. That's what we honor today, the, the right to religious freedom. We honor the right to follow our conscience. And as Henry VIII you know, was putting um, Thomas More to death, Thomas More would say, I die the king's good servant, but God's first. Thomas More was only 57 when he was uh, declared when he was killed and then ultimately declared a martyr for the faith. So let's pray today in a special way for our country. Let's pray for all world leaders. Let us pray for the conversion of our country. Let's pray for the Diocese of Arlington and let's pray for an increase in respect for the sanctity of marriage and the ability to follow our conscience, not to have our conscience violated in society today. So we pray today, St. John Fisher and St. Thomas More, pray for us.